Hi, my name is Michael Williams, and today I'm going to be walking you through a tutorial on how to export your data out of Movie Magic and import it into Casper. There's a number of complicated steps involved with this, and I'm going to walk you through each one step by step. But let me give you a general overview of what we're going to be doing today. First, we're going to be importing strip layouts into Movie Magic Scheduling. Next, we're going to be printing strip layouts to five different PDFs. Third, we're going to copy text from those five PDFs into five different text documents. Then we're going to import those five different text documents into Casper. And finally, we're going to clean up that data so that it can be used properly. So the first thing we need to do is to properly prepare your Movie Magic scheduling file so that you can export data from it. And the most important step in this is please back up your data. Your current Movie Magic file, as it stands right now, make a copy of it. Put it on a thumb drive, put it on another hard drive, make a copy of that so that you always have a proper backup of your data. Once that's done, we're going to import some new strip layouts into Movie Magic. And let me show you how that's done. You're going to go up to Design, Strip Layouts, and then we're going to click on the Import Strip Layouts icon and then navigate to where the Casper output strip layouts are on your hard drive. They come with Casper in a folder called Schedule Export, so just navigate here to where those are and select all of them by clicking on the first file and then shift clicking on the last file to select them all. Click Import, and all of those layouts are going to be imported into your Movie Magic file. Go ahead and close this up, and let me show you what we've done right now. Going over here to my strip board and selecting the layout, I'm now going to select the first of the layouts, Casper Output 1. And it's very small, but I think you're going to be able to see what we're doing here. Each one of these different lines here denotes a different piece of data for each record. So scene 1 is 6 eighths of a page, is night, occurs on script day 8, is exterior, Bedford Falls, here's the description, and there's some more data over here towards the right. What we've done is created five different layouts for your Movie Magic file that cumulatively will hold all of the data from your breakdown. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to export all of that data into a series of PDF documents by printing each one of these different strip layouts into a PDF. But first, let me digress a little bit because there's an important concept here that you're going to need to understand as we move forward. And that concept is delimiters. A delimiter is any character of text that notes the separation between one piece of data and the next piece of data in that chain. The delimiter that we're using here is this little up and down character, which is called the pipe character. It's actually on your keyboard. It's just beneath your delete key and just above your return key, usually paired with the backslash character. You might have heard of comma delimited files. These are files that use a comma to denote the difference between one piece of data and the next. But because commas are commonly used in the descriptions and in a lot of different areas of your breakdown, we can't use a comma. So we're going to use this pipe character instead. In this next section, we're going to print the strip layouts to five different PDFs. A handy and yet optional step here is to already have your data sorted in script order, scene one, scene two, scene three, and so on not in schedule order. You can actually do it either way. It's just going to be more handy to have that data in script order once it's actually brought into Casper. Just easier to read. You'll be able to find your scenes easier. However you have your data, let me show you how we get it out. Click on File, Print. You're going to select Casper Output 1 as the strip layout. And then you're going to uncheck all of these different boxes except for Stripboard, because the only thing that we want to export here is the Stripboard. We don't care about day breaks, banners, any of the rest of this stuff. Make sure that your offsets are set to zero and that your range is set to all. Then go ahead and click Print, and then Create a PDF. And if you're on a PC, this will be somewhat different. You're actually going to set your printer to your Acrobat or however you export PDFs. On a Mac, you just click on the little Print button, Save as PDF, And we're going to call this first file Casper Output 1. You can actually name them whatever you like, but just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to name them the same as the strips. 
click on Save, and now we've created that PDF. You're going to repeat these steps for each one of the different strip layouts. Output 2, Output 3, Output 4, and Output 5. And I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick right now. Okay, now that we're done with the export, we can actually go ahead and close out Movie Magic Scheduling. So what we should have right now is five different PDFs. And in those PDFs is all of the information from our breakdown. The next step is to copy the text from those PDFs into text documents. And let me show you how that works. Just double click on the first PDF. And then we need to select all of this data and we're gonna drop it into a text document. So just hit Command A or Control A on a PC, select all the data, hit Command C or Control V on a PC. That's copied the data. And then we're gonna switch over to a text editor. You can use uh, Mac Text Edit, you can use Notepad, any text editor will do. And then we're just gonna hit Command V or Control V on a PC. And there's our data. You're going to want to ensure that the format is set to text, not rich text. You want to make sure that this is an actual text only file with no formatting in it. And once that's done, you're going to file, save, and then I'm going to put these text documents right next to where the PDFs were on my hard drive. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm actually going to name them the same as the PDFs. ensuring that the file extension is txt for text file. Click Save, jump back to Acrobat, and we're going to close that Acrobat file. We're then going to open up the second PDF, and then the third one, and the fourth one, and the fifth one, and repeat those exact same steps, which I'll do right now. Okay, all done. So at the end of this step, I now have five different text documents which contain all of the text from those PDFs. File one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna go ahead and quit my text edit right now and then we're gonna jump into the next step. Now we're ready to begin the actual importation process into Casper. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna to switch to Casper, which I already have open here. And then I'm gonna click on File, import and select CSV file which is already selected here. Click import. There may be an additional step which you may see on your computer which I don't see on mine but occasionally Excel will ask you a security question just confirming that you want to actually import data into your Excel spreadsheet. Just click continue and say yes. Then you'll see this screen which is choose file and here we're going to actually choose the first of our text files which we created previously. So I'm just going to navigate to where my first text file is, and then I need to select text files from enable. Then you'll see that the text files have all been, uh, are all available to be clicked here. Select the first one, click get data. Then you're going to select delimited, and then click next. And then on step two of the wizard, you're actually going to unclick tab. You're going to click other, and in other, you're going to type in the pipe character, which we're using as our delimiter. Remember, that's just beneath the delete key and just above your return or enter key in a PC. Uh, hit shift and the backslash, and you'll see that pipe character. You're going to want to ensure that the treat consecutive delimiters as one is unchecked and that the text qualifier is the double quote, which they already are right here. Click on next. This step takes a little finesse, so uh, please watch closely as I do this. You're going to want to click on the first column here. This is the data preview section. And then you're going to want to use a little scroll slider right here and slide all the way to the very end. Now it appears that Excel has actually selected all of those different columns because they all now appear black with white text. This is actually a glitch in Excel. These columns aren't selected yet until we hit shift and click on that last column right there and click on it. And it's important that we do this because when we select text up here from the very top, which is the next thing we're going to do, we're telling Excel that all of these columns here are all going to be text columns and not general or date or any other kind of column type. So just remember, don't let your eyes deceive you. 
you actually need to click on that last column, uh, or rather shift click on it, so that you're selecting all of those columns at the same time in order to let Excel know that they're all going to be text columns. And then click Finish. This final import data dialog comes up now and is asking you where do you want to put all of that data that you just imported? And we're going to put it into a new sheet. Click OK. And now there is a new sheet called Sheet 1 down here. And it has all of the data from that first text file imported into it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to repeat those same steps for the remaining four files, for files 2 through 5. And let me go ahead and do that right now. All right, so now at the end of this step, I have all of my data from all of those different text files imported into five different worksheets in Casper, which leaves only one step left, and that's cleaning up the data. First, let's start by actually taking a look at the data which we just imported. This is sheet one, which was the data that we imported from the first text file. Let's review the columns. First column is the scene number, the second column is the page count, day night, then script day, interior exterior, slug line, description, cast, and then notes. And then notice this last column here. There are a bunch of carrots, uh, that's the little pointy character there, in, the, in this column. And it actually exists in every one of these different imported worksheets. There's a carrot column in each one of these. And we can ignore that. This carrot column is another delimiter. It's a second delimiter that says this is the end of the line and that the next piece of data goes to the beginning of the next line. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select all of the data except for that little caret column, which in this case is J. I find the handiest way to do this is to actually scroll to the bottom, grabbing that last cell, and then dragging up and left until you've got it all. Now with all of that highlighted, we're going to hit Command-C for copy, or Control-C if you're on a PC. And then we're going to go to the Breakdown tab. And this is where we're actually going to put all of that data. We're going to put all of it all lined up here into one big table that has all of the breakdown in it. Just select the first cell here, and then hit Command-V or Control-V on a PC, and it will paste in all of the data from that first text file. And then we're going to repeat those steps for each of the subsequent files, starting with the next unpopulated column, which in this case is props. So we're going to switch to sheet two, scroll down to the bottom, select the bottommost cell, scroll up and left until we get to the very top, hit command C to copy, go back down to the breakdown, selecting the first cell in the props column, hitting Command V or Control V and pasting in that data. The next one will be special effects. So we go to sheet three. This is, starts with the special effects right there. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Pull up and left, copy, go to the breakdown, select the first unpopulated column, hit paste. That's all in there. Going to the fourth sheet now down to the bottom, copy, go to the breakdown, paste, <clears throat> and then as it turns out on my last sheet, it turns out I actually don't have any data in this particular worksheet, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip this, but if you have data in those final columns here, you're going to want to import that as well. So let's take a look at the breakdown tab here, and let's see what's in there. So we've got our scenes, our pages, our day, night, and scrolling all the way across here is all of the data from your breakdown. When you scroll down, you can see it's all in here. But just because it's in doesn't mean that that's data that Excel can actually read. So we actually need to clean this up a little bit before it's ready for prime time. And the first thing we need to do is we need to let Excel know that these numbers right here are actually fractions. They aren't just a series of numbers that were typed in like text they actually have numeric value. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the entire column here, column B. You're just uh, going to click on B and you're going to select the whole thing. You're going to go up to Format, Cells. You're going to click on Fraction, and then you're going to click on As Eighths. Click OK. And now Excel will know that these are actually fractions that are in this column. 
Now there's two last things that we need to do here, and these are probably the most time consuming of all of these because they involve you going in and actually changing a lot of data by hand. So let's jump right in because they're gonna take a little bit of time. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna note that these first two columns actually contain more than what you're seeing as you look right at them. So it looks like this first column right here says uh, one for the scene and the, and the second column says six eighths for pages. But actually there's more data in there than meets the eye. If you double click on this column so you can actually see what's happening in there, notice that it's one and then there's a space. That space is a killer because right now it's preventing Excel from understanding that that one is just a one. So what we need to do is on every single one of these cells for scenes is we actually need to delete that space. We're gonna hit the delete key here, hit enter. I'm gonna go down to the second one, double click, see the extra space there, and I'm gonna delete that, hit return. And I'm gonna do that for every single one of these scene numbers as I go through here. And I'm actually only gonna take the time right now to do the first 10 because I wanna keep going and show you the rest of this. Okay. Those first 10 scenes are now clean. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is the same thing for the pages column. So we're gonna double click on that first cell. And again, it's got an extra space in there. Hit the delete key to go back, hit enter. And notice when I do that suddenly Excel throws the data to the right. You may have noticed in using Excel in the past that when things are numbers, Excel has a tendency to throw them over to the right, and when things are text, it has a tendency to throw things over to the left. This is a good visual cue for you so that you can differentiate between the cells that you have fixed and the cells that you have not fixed. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on the second cell. We're gonna hit the backspace, return, double click on the next one, and we're gonna keep going until I get down to the 10th scene. Okay, so for those first two columns, I've got clean data for the first 10 scenes. Now, you'll be extremely happy to know that you don't need to do that for the rest of all of these columns. We've made adjustments for that. Those are the only two columns that Excel really needs to know the proper data. There are actually extra spaces in almost all of the rest of these columns. It is a common error that occurs in data importation, but Casper can adjust for those. Now, the last thing you can wanna do, and let me scroll over here to props, you notice that at the beginning of all of the props here, it actually says the word props, colon, and then a space, and then actually lists the props. This is a movie magic thing. Movie magic doesn't have the ability to list props in a breakdown without actually saying the name of the category first. So you'll be happy to know you don't need to do this by hand. We can actually do a find and replace to pull all of these out. And you need to do it for each one of these columns, make a pair of costumes, set dressing, and uh, as it continues down the line. So to do this, you're gonna click on edit, replace and we're going to find props colon space and that space is important and then replace with nothing and just make sure you've deleted a couple times there to make sure there's nothing in there and then we're going to replace all found 93 of them okay we're going to close that up and now we can see that our props no longer are prefaced with the word props and then you're going to do that for make a pair, costume, and just keep going until you run out of data. And once you're done with that, congratulations, you have imported your movie magic data into Excel, and now you can use it in Casper. You can actually take the rest of these worksheets down here, sheets one, two, three, four, and five that you created on the import, and actually just delete them. They're no longer of any use to you. So just right click on them, select delete, confirm okay, do that for each of the rest of these. Now let's go ahead and test our data to make sure that it's actually working. So I'm gonna to switch to the call sheet front and I'm gonna click on the scenes column and let's go ahead and type in some scene numbers. And it looks like it's working. So that's it. We really hope you enjoy using Casper and please hit us up on our Facebook page. We're really curious to see how you're using it and to see if you've come up with better solutions to some of these issues. This importation process is merely the best way that we've come up with to import data into Excel and thus Casper. If you have a better way, let us know and we'll absolutely incorporate it into the next version. Even small changes and small tips are welcome. Thanks very much and enjoy using Casper.